Do you ever feel powerless? Do other people make you feel small? Well, you're in luck because today on This Quick Fix, we're going to talk about how to be powerful. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Danny. I'm here with Randy. What's up, Randy? Hey, Danny. So, for, you know, why? I mean, I think it's obvious, but why, why do you think people would want to be power, feel powerful? Well, you know, everybody wants to be important. Everybody wants to feel yeah. like they're valuable, like other people need them. And if you don't feel that way, then it can be tough. And plus, like, you know, nobody wants really wants to be weak. And I think there are all areas we know that we're weak in, and it's almost embarrassing sometimes. So, like, people want to be strong and powerful. And the cool thing is that it is something that we can do, and we're going to be discussing today exactly how to do it. It totally is. You know, it's funny, too. And it, <clears throat> I remember <laughs> when I first started working out, it was later in life. And I remember just thinking of how much stronger I felt. I was like, wow, how did <laughs> I live before like this? <laughs> I still remember that because I remember when you came back from Texas, yeah. you were jacked. And like everybody was yeah. like, oh, my God, like y- your whole life you were. And then all of a sudden, Texas. Yeah, huge. it was awesome. It was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was funny. But yeah, it makes things easier, you know, lifting, mm-hmm. moving things. It's just, you get, you know, you feel powerful. All right. So today we each got a few tips for you. I'm going to start and, you know, hopefully afterwards you'll, you'll be able to be more powerful. So my first one is actually be yourself, <clears throat> uh, pursue authenticity. Cause I think this is, this is crucial. You know, you really can't, you can't be powerful or feel powerful. If you are living a life that's not your own, if you don't know yourself, if you're not comfortable with yourself. And I think there is an important thing when you're comfortable with yourself, you can face the world and not worry about, you know, those pressures, those expectations, all that other stuff that might kind of dictate how you act or how you live your life or how you feel. That's a really good one because a lot of people try and imitate others. They see these idols that they have or celebrities or whatever, and they try and imitate them. But really, at best, you can be a second rate version of them. But you can always be you can always be the best in the world at being you. And it's really cool when you are authentic in being yourself. Yeah, it may be uncomfortable initially because you may have to go against your family's values or society's values or things like that. But then you start living this really awesome life that everything you do is super fulfilling. So I think that's a great one. Thank you. Which 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 brings me to mine, which is focus on what's in your control. So after you've decided to be authentic with yourself, life is going to throw a lot of stuff at you. And not only that, you know, there's yeah. politicians, there's pandemics, there's all these, th- there's ev- the news every day has all these things going on. Oh, but God. if you focus on yeah. that, you can't do anything about them. They're outside of your sphere of control. So you can only really focus on what you have control over. And by focusing on that, you get to see the impact you can make. And once you start making that impact, you realize that you do have a lot more power than you may think, as opposed to just being a victim of politics or society or pandemics or news or whatever else. Yeah, I really like that, too, because when you focus on things out of your control, you know, you get worked up about certain outcomes that you can't influence. And so you constantly get this reinforced idea that you don't have any power. (laughs) But when you focus on what's in your control, you reinforce the control that you do have, which also reinforces your power. I really, and it's a really good one. Well, it's, it's like uh, Martin Seligman in uh, the book Learned Helplessness or Learned Optimism. He talks about how learned helplessness, which is the thought that we can't actually make a difference, the thought that we don't have control, is right. actually identical with depression in many animals. So that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just having, having the idea that you do have some modicum of control. And oftentimes when I've been depressed in my life, it's because I thought I didn't have control. And once I started taking action in what was within my control, the depressed feelings resolved. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I, you know, it's like every time I felt depressed, it's like the exact same feeling. It's like you, you feel powerless basically. And then, but you have to, you have to then force yourself to start doing things to then gain that back. It's, it's a really crazy relationship, but it's true. I like that one. My second one um, is, so cultivate self-confidence and enthusiasm. So I think these go nicely together. So, you know, we all admire people who are confident. Being confident, you know, is being yourself, being comfortable with yourself, and therefore choosing what's right for you so you can be enthusiastic and energetic going after these things. You know, Nietzsche says that, you know, nothing gets done without a dose of high spirits. 
you know, you need that energy to face those resistances in the world, all the things you're going to meet in order to keep going. And you'll feel powerful when you have that energy and you have that confidence in yourself. That's, that's a great one. Cause all, you know, all the books that I read on personal development, all of them stress the importance of confidence and enthusiasm. <laughs> like they say to be confident, act confidently. It's kind of one of those things where you fake it till you make it. And then with enthusiasm, it, it doesn't, guarantee that you can get anything done but you can get anything done a lot easier and more quickly with enthusiasm so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's definitely it definitely greases the gears you know it's funny that the fake it till you make it thing it, it's so true and i think it's a bad phrase or way of saying it because i think a lot of times it's just about like proving to yourself that you can because you believe you can't and you have to prove yeah. it so sometimes you just have to like well a is, of, like, it, a is, it is just you know yeah, it is just bad, uh, a bad way of saying it, because it's basically the same thing as practice. I mean, you go, you play any sport, you practice, you're basically faking it until you make it, you know, same thing. I mean, it's basically just practice. Yeah. yeah. So my next one is build good habits and utilize the compound effects. So basically having regular routines of habits that will build up your character, build up your strength. So if we're talking about being powerful, Things like strength training, sure, that would definitely help. But other habits, things like having a morning ritual that makes you feel alive, that makes you enjoy the day, practicing gratitude, all of these things that are beneficial. And then you build the habits. And when you do them every day, a little bit every day, it compounds on itself. So like with compound interest, it feels slow in the beginning, feels like you're not getting anywhere, feels like you're not doing anything. But then towards the end, we have explosive gains. So you know, just utilizing the habits to really get the benefits you want in life. You know, it's a really good one too, because I think, you know, having those habits, like I think most of us too, we feel powerless and we feel like things are out of our control when we face a lot of like unexpected things in our day um, or things we're not, you know, we're not ready for. And if you have those habits and routines, you have a plan and it's always a way to anchor yourself. So you don't have that feeling anymore. And I think that's a, it's a really good one. You can help yourself sort of deal with those ups and downs by having some stability or having, you know, creating like a foundation of stability. Yeah, like yeah. I can't even tell you that a lot of the things that we talk about, like I have written down and I read on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. So now when these obstacles come up in my life, it's just like, it's okay to lose, but don't lose a lesson. Or like all these different things that I yeah. write down that are, are useful in the moment. Like, you know, no need to quit now. You can always quit. So why do it now? And it's just like these <laughs> things pop up where maybe before I had these habits of reading them often, uh, I might not have these thoughts. But now because I see them often, they're kind of a part of my daily routine. When mm -hmm. difficulties come up, which they are guaranteed to do, I now have something useful that pops into my head. Yeah, they always do. It's so nice to have like tools at the ready, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my, uh, my last one is actually... Uh, so I think this is important. Cultivate general knowledge. You know, there's obviously a push for specialization and specialization is important in a lot of ways You get very good at something. But I think having general knowledge is also lets you it gives you a better way of coping with a lot of things in the world, making good decisions, solving problems and seeing things in many different ways. And that definitely makes you feel and makes you more powerful because you're you have a better grasp of what's going on. And a better set of tools, just like we were talking about, to handle the things that you face in your day. That is very important to learn more than just one thing. Like everybody goes to school to learn this teeny little niche. And then they have this <laughs> one job where they do this one thing and that's their whole entire life. But you miss out because once you start learning a whole bunch of more stuff, you realize how interconnected everything is. And then the more you learn, the easier it gets to learn other things as well. So, yeah, that's a great one. It does. Yeah. My last one is... Uh, do grounding activities, exercise, and fresh air. So the exercise and fresh air, I don't need to explain to anybody. You understand what that is. Exercise just makes you feel powerful in your body. The fresh air is cleansing because you need to go outside. But the yeah. grounding movements are things that connect you kind of to yourself, also to mother nature, to the earth, whatever it is. Things like dynamic meditation, nonlinear movements, ecstatic dance, primal therapy, uh, what else? Well, anyways, those are, those are some of them. Wim Hof breathing. So like all of these things are grounding exercises that help connect you to something larger than yourself. And that 
makes you feel really powerful because then you realize your power isn't limited just to this teeny little body, this fleshy sack right here. Your power extends <laughs> a little quite a sack bit. of cells. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your power extends quite a bit beyond that, and then you can start feeling really powerful. I like that one. That's a really good one. You know, I think all three are crucial. Obviously, you know, physical body, physical health, going outside, and I really like that idea too. You know, grounding yourself in something larger than yourself. It's a it's a good way to feel powerful, and also just I think remind maybe. It, do you think it helps remind you that you know of the kind of um of of how certain things are just not important <laughs> because they're you know helps you keep I guess a perspective when it yeah. matters I know I know that when I've done the grounding practices on a regular basis it adds like an unshakability or an unflappability to me it's just basically like anything that comes up it just doesn't stick to me it's just like whatever so yeah it, because I realized that you know I'm a lot more than whatever can come at me so that's been really helpful with those I said, come on, I like that. Yeah, that is crucial. All right. So those are our tips for how to be powerful. You guys should all be able to now work on this and feel more powerful, not feel weak in your lives. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. Watch us on YouTube. Please click notification, subscribe, listen on all the podcast uh, apps, um, share with your friends. We'll be back later this week with a full-length episode. Until then, though, later, Randy. Later, Danny. <laughs>